1929, Wall Street was booming. The Roaring Twenties were in full swing, and aviation technology and the public's fascination with aviation were growing at a rapid pace. Pilots were pushing themselves and their planes higher and faster. So it was not surprising that air racing became very popular, both with the public and with pilots wanting to test their skills. Hi, I'm Joe Klink, and at this month's Aviation Club, we will be viewing a video of the 1929 Women's Air Derby, also known as the Powder Puff Derby. The national air races began in 1920, but only men were allowed to compete. Even though many women flew airplanes and balloons, parachuted, repaired and test flew airplanes, did stunt flying in Hollywood, wing walking and barnstorming, set altitude and speed records, and performed in air circuses, they did not race airplanes. Only men did. Women were considered incapable of flying fast, complex airplanes. But things were changing in American life. Women had served well in many capacities during World War I. They gained new freedoms and independence, culminating in passage of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution, which granted women the right to vote during the same year, 1920, as the first national air race. So aviation racing grew along with a change in attitudes toward women and their place in society. The pressure to allow women to participate snowballed, and by 1929, they were finally allowed to compete in a women-only category, separate from men. Thus, the 1929 Women's Air Derby was born. Humorist Will Rogers, after seeing one of the female pilots dab what he thought was powder on her nose, announced, it looks like a powder puff derby to me, and the nickname stuck. Never mind that the pilot was probably wiping dirt or grease off of her face. To qualify for the women's air derby, pilots had to have at least 100 hours of solo flight and 25 hours of cross-country flight, the same as for men. But the aircraft had to have horsepower appropriate for a woman. One woman owned and flew her own 300 horsepower airplane, which was disallowed as it was deemed by the judges as being too fast for a woman to fly. She found a lesser horsepower airplane to race. Eventually, 20 women signed on to compete, including famous Amelia Earhart, movie star Ruth Elder, wing walker Phoebe Omley, record holder Louise Thaden, and cigar smoking Pancho Barnes. The Powder Puff Derby was a nine day race with eight overnight stops with additional stops for refueling, beginning in Santa Monica, California and ending in Cleveland, Ohio. It covered over 2,800 miles over some of the roughest areas of the U.S including high mountains and vast deserts. Most of the women flew in open cockpits using only road maps and a compass and ground landmarks for navigation. Some got lost and detoured into Mexico. One lost her maps as they blew out of her open cockpit and she decided to land in a field to get her bearings. When her red airplane attracted a large group of bovine animals, she prayed, Dear God, let them all be cows. After chasing them away, she took off again without benefit of maps. Each night after a day of flying, the exhausted racers were expected to attend a gala dinner in their honor for publicity purposes. Their minds, though, were more on what was happening to their airplanes, which needed to be refueled and often repaired and watched over to prevent sabotage. One pilot began her day by finding oil in her fuel tank. Another found her fuel contaminated with bits of rubber and other debris. 
Another had her wing wires eaten through by acid and had to withdraw. Mornings were always interesting as the ladies were never sure what they would find. But evening landings were sometimes even more exciting. It was a common practice for observers to swarm onto the runway and even to drive their cars out. One car did just that as a pilot was flaring to land and was hit by the plane. The plane and car were totaled, but both the pilot and the driver crawled out unharmed. The women who flew in the Powder Puff Derby were an amazing group of women, and the stories they have to tell are fascinating. They're hilarious, sad, and inspiring. The Aviation Club will present a video which tells the amazing story of the Powder Puff Derby, including some original footage, and the 20 highly skilled female aviators who flew in it. I think you'll find it very enjoyable, educational, and inspiring, and we'll have refreshments as well. So I invite you to join us on Thursday, December 27th in the Social Center from 1.15 to 2.45 p.m.